So we have a variety of uh, people here. Uh, welcome to the talk. Uh, so let me finish it off uh, in 30 minutes, then we can have a 10 minutes of uh, discussion. What I'm going to tell you, uh, basically oil and gas started from drilling. We do a drilling on the, on the, on the field first. We go and do a survey, geological survey. Uh, we don't do that. There's companies and they found the oil reservoir somewhere. And then we hire the drilling company. They go and drill the hole and cap it, right? What we manufacture here, what I'm involved, that we call it a oil head and Christmas tree, what will sit on top of this hole and, and another production. That means if you want to produce the oil, you just uh, open the valve and oil will come out. It can be on land-based rig, it can be subsea. So I'm going to uh, bring you through uh, the quick overview of this, um, this oil-based uh, installation, what we do here and what of the manufacturer we do here. Can you, can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so uh, let me go through uh, with a quick video, if you guys can see, so that can see you, show you the, how the drilling, the first one don't have any uh, sound, so I just wanted to show you how the drilling operation works. If you can go to YouTube, you can download some video. So first of all, we, like, we go to the field, we put a casing, then we start drilling, um, hole from bigger diameter, right and then we put the casing inside we put cementing cement it because to stabilize the oil then we put a casing head right then we put a BOP the top one you saw just now come BOP the blowout preventer then we keep on drilling until we reach the we reach the oil reservoir right so it will be a bigger hole come to smaller come to smaller and when you drill the bigger hole we do the casing we do the cementing Let's see uh, sorry, Dulanda. Dulanda. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, this is Shukaman speaking. So, can you put in the presentation mode? And I do not know. At least I can see only the slide one. Slide one, yeah. Oh, okay. And it's, it's not in a presentation mode. Yeah. Thank. Uh, can you see now? No, uh, the screen is not there. Okay. Let me go through the can you see the second page now not yet not yet uh, it's uh, i think you have to share again i don't know somebody should help him yes sir this is team reminiscence sir uh, please share your yeah this is uh, this is visible now the third slide is visible now sir and now please go for the presentation mode full screen mode can you see now? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the typical uh, land rig uh, in 1960s, right? That means the, the when we started uh, drilling on the land field. So now if you see latest land rigs, um, you guys stop me if you cannot see the next page, yeah? Because I'll be going a bit quick. Surely, sir. Uh, so if you say the land rig, now situation has been changed. It's much nicer and cleaner and, and a lot of latest technology. Uh, on the land rig, then we come to the drilling bird for subsea, uh, then we can come as a jackup rig. There's a different drilling rigs, depends upon your water depth, depends upon the oil reservoir, what you are drilling. Uh, then we have a drill ship, then we have a semi-submissible rigs, and we have a platform drilling through. So these are the drilling rigs. They do, they go and drill the hole, and they cap it, and they go off, right? Uh, and this is very important because I don't know whether you guys seen a movie called Deepwater Horizon came out like five, six years ago, which is based on a true story 
that this oil and gas industry, the, the equipment we install and manufacture so precise that there's a big uh, fire on Deepwater Horizon Rig. Uh, it was BP, British Petroleum, now they call Beyond Petroleum, in 2010, 11 crew members were died. And, and then it took like a, still I think cleaning go operation going on, about $40 billion have been fined, kind of stuff. So this is very critical because oil and gas will flow through this uh, assembly and installation. And then if any leak happened or any process miss happened, it will be a disaster, right? So these are the typical land rigs. Uh, so um, land rigs are on the land. So typically we saw this one in Saudi, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, uh, all this Middle East region. Um, it's very cheap because oil is very nearby. No need to have so much um, precautions. I mean, like precautions are there, but these are like a typical oil which are not containing the so much corrosive material. So it is made of low alloy steel. But these are the on the installation base, right? And installation base, what we do, we manufacture piece by piece in the soft floor and we send it to the, in the, onto the uh, site and they will assemble and install and commission this thing. So if you see in the right hand side, we go step by step. It will be bigger diameter, we call casing head, they go smaller, casing spool, they got tubing head and then we go that, we call Christmas tree. The top portion we call Christmas tree and oil will flow through the, the red line you see there and it will come out from the choke. Yeah, I wanted to show a video, but somehow it is not linking properly. So basically is a bunch of casing head and casing spool and tubing spool. We put together, we manufactured separately, right? And inside got all sealing mechanism. All the companies like Baker Hughes or Cameron or FMC, their technology depends on the sealing mechanism because these are metal to metal seal. Uh, because oil and gas will come out through this bore and make sure there is no leakage and this sealing mechanism works perfectly and the tolerance of this equipment when you manufacture are very, very tight. Otherwise, it will leak and when it leaked, because this are comes with a tremendous pressure, right? Because when the oil and gas in the reservoir, when you open the valve, it will come as a tremendous pressure, depends upon the, how, much, uh, how much oil reserve we have there. So um, it can looks like very simple like that, right? Depends upon, as I said, how depth your oil is and how is the temperature and pressure of that reservoir. And it can go as big as like this, right? This one we call it high temperature, high pressure unit. That means this is also land rigs. We will be installing in land, but these are coming with a tremendous pressure like 15,000 PSI. And the oil temperature can be, or the gas temperature can be as high as 350 degree Fahrenheit. So, so, uh, so what we manufacture here, this, this one we manufacture based on some code and specification, right? We call American Petroleum Institute. Uh, there is a specification standard, and this standard um, we have to follow if we want to do a oil and gas um, equipment and we call 6A. 6A, they have different categories. 6A is mainly for surface equipment. Surface equipment means like it is on the surface. If you go to sub C, what is like inside the C, it will be 17D. So the API specification, what they do, they give us different type of specification, what type of material you should use, what type of um, sealing mechanism we should use. So they will give you the guideline of the connectors, fittings, OLED equipment, and, and various dimensions too, so that uh, our customer, suppose our customer is the Aramco, ExxonMobil, ONGC, so they can use our bottom section and they can use top section from some other competitor, right? So these are our control dimension from API to, to have kind of, um, interchangeability. So, and then based on the temperature rating, temperature rating comes from the, the geological survey when you do, then they, the, the geological company will tell us that if there is a reservoir, the temperature will be like this. Uh, then we, based on that, we'll do a classification. Uh, based on the temperature, we can see there. So if we go to North Sea, 
Normally we see temperature plus K because the temperature will be very, very cold there. So your sealing mechanism, the material we use, the everything will be different because, uh, rather than what I do in Kuwait because Kuwait is hot uh, and surface is shallow. I can get hot, um, oil very quickly, very low depth. But if I go to North Sea, I have to go to K. Uh, temperature is very low and Tim, that oil can be very, very further away from the surface sea. Based on that, and we'll go by the material class. So one is temperature class and another is the material class. Material class is the highest material class we call HH. The bottom one we call sour service. Sour service when we drill oil or gas, the dangerous thing come out from there is H2S. And when H2S is more in the oil and gas, it will have a tremendous corrosion, corrosive properties, right? So when the oil and gas will flow through, that path need to be properly protected with a corrosion resistance alloy, right? We call this alloy 6 to 5. If sour service is not so much gas, depends upon the concentration, we can go to stainless steel. But if you see that no, it is very sour, then we have to go for a internal 6 to 5 at this moment. And then oil and gas flow through with this protective coating. So it will not have so much corrosion on the on the coating. So um, based on that, API also guide us what type of material we should use, the material properties we should use. So you see there is a call PSL, we call product specification level. PSL one means low grade, like the oil is like just 10 feet below the ground. If I go to Kuwait, I can just dig a hole. You can see the oil coming out. So this one called PSL one. But if you go to deeper and deeper, you call PSL4. Uh, then if you do the PSL4, then API also tell us how the melting practice would be the material, forming practice would be the material, how the heat treatment should be, how the microstructure will be, all will be controlled by API too, right? And based on that, we, know, we need to have our own specification of uh, material, that detailed material specification, PSL1, these are the thing, PSL2, what we have to do, right? based on the PSL lab. So next, go to the quality control team. And uh, as I said, the, this is very, very uh, critical the, because these are metal to metal steel. There's no rubber gasket. We do use rubber gasket for high temperature sometimes, but most of them are metal to metal steel. That means the machining and everything we have to do so that there is no sealing mechanism except the metal to metal contact point. So the precision should be too much. So. Uh, all the equipment, calibration equipment, all of pressure testing equipment are all calibrated and all highly precision. Yeah. So just and 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 then we as I, as I said, because these materials are so vulnerable, it will come with a tremendous pressure and temperature. All these things need to be tested as per non-destructive testing, right? Non-destructive testing is like visual is one of them. Then we have to have a uh, welding inspection, every inspection we have to do. Uh, then we have to do a hardness inspection because once you manufacture complete, you don't know the part. Though we have a test coupon, we test with the part um, and check the magic physical trend, but the, the shape and size of the block will come different ways. So we kind of do hardness test to make sure these uh, material are meeting our requirement of the, of the PSL level. So different PSL level have the different hardness requirement and we have to meet if there's a H2S service or is hydrogen sulfide, we have a national association of corrosion engineers. They give you the guideline. If you want to use for the sour service or H2S service, you have to have this type of hardness because they said beyond certain hardness value, the corrosion resistance, corrosion property deteriorates. So we call 35 HRC, Rockwell hardness C. Above that, um, we cannot use because then you, our hardness test, uh, the corrosion property will be diminished. So, give me a minute. It was with me, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, we, are, we, okay. we are with you. Okay. Because we are in mute. That's why. No, that's fine. I, I thought, no, no, no. I don't no, just no, take no, no. <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. Thank we you, guys. We all are listening to you. Okay. Thank you. So uh, hardness testing machine you can do as per STM V10, Brinell, Rockwell, Vickers, uh, different um, 
equipment uh, is used and different blocks depends upon the size and shape and requirement and then uh, not only that so these are the pictures of the harness testing what we do practically in inside the factory so we have different type of wing testers uh, vinyl testers rock oil testers um, then we have to go to the non-destructive testing right because these are so critical it will be high pressure and high temperature sometimes and basically high pressure you see your car, our car tire pressure, right? The car we use, I think, what, 30 or 60 PSI, right? If you see the tire burst, the sound you guys heard, right? And these are the minimum 10,000 PSI, 15,000 PSI application. So we have to make sure all these parts are properly tested, uh, heat treated, properly tested, tested with the non-destructive testing, with um, MPI, we call magnetic particle inspection, ultrasonic inspection so that there is no crack there and if there's a crack how big is the crack we cannot accept any crack or some of the inclusion we have all kind of requirement stated in the api 6a2 and we have our own specification to go through yeah so and then once you follow that api process they they'll give you they will issue us a stamp called api monogram stamp uh, what i highlighted there if you can see the picture and that stamp a lot of companies will buy API monogram product. That means they are telling that your call uh, product has certain, is meeting certain requirement as per the API standard, right? So that's called monogram. So this is our guidebook, right? It's like a Bible. Based on that, we manufacture. So raw material. Let's go to raw material. How we do it? We use 4G, mostly 4G, because you guys know, um, these guys, I think, uh, casting has a lot of poor structure. Um, I know casting has improved a lot, but still because of the high temperature and high pressure, we prefer to use um, forging and forging can be open die, can be closed die, uh, but mostly forging because of the grain flow and, and, uh, and after forging we'll do the heat treatment to get the unified structure, right? Typical structure, we look for the mutton site and all, all most of the material we use is 40 on 30 with a low alloy steel. Uh, so, how we do it? Like we, we high, I think you guys know forging. Um, so just heat it up uh, beyond AC temperature. We call it right, or, or eight feet, nine hundred degrees centigrade. Depends on the alloy material we have. Then you just go to the hammer. I think I have some picture there. Yeah, these are the billets you buy from the steel mill, and then you just um, cut the top head, and then put in the furnace. These pictures are like. 20 years ago picture, sorry guys. And then you just do like open die forging. You just keep on squeezing, keep on squeezing, keep on squeezing, keep on squeezing. It will come like that, right? So the final product, you see the, the raw safe forging here, it will become like that. So normally, typically you see the forging ratio should be four is to one minimum. Right, that's to make sure that all the sinkage cavity, everything is get messed up and welded together. And after we do the forging, the structure will be all you guys know is a dendritic structure. So what we will do, we'll machine to the size, near size, and then we'll do the heat treatment. We normally do coin and temper. So as I said, dendritic structure, and then we go up again. Um, and then you throw in the water or oil or polymer. Normally we will do oil and we control the temperature of the oil bath, we control the temperature of the part. And then after quenching, we'll go for tempering so that the structure become modest structure with uniform size. So that's the typical forging we receive. We receive 90% of forging come from China or Italy and some from India, Bharat Forge but mostly come and then we go to our factory. So our factory start from here. So this is a typical factory of manufacturing plant for oil and gas. We have big, big yards sometimes. We have a certification. You can see like ISO, API certification. The typical process we have in the shop factory are the machine tools, cladding station, and, and assembly and test section. I'll, I'll go quickly one by one. So cladding, as I say, cladding, cladding, machining, and assembly and test. This is the main activity we do. 
and the supporting activities inspection delivering packing shipment harness testing everything right but the main three manufacturing process is the three category so this is the thing we manufacture in 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 in, in pieces right we do this one we, we stack it up together just to show how big it can be but we manufacture in a pieces what i'll show you this is the subsea we make the subsea trees as well in singapore and in brazil and in in montos uk so this is a typical subsea tree we manufacture so what is cladding right cladding is nothing but that we are putting a makeup right your base material is below and it, we put a layer of corrosion resistance material it can be stainless steel it can be in corner 6 to 5 so that the corrosive liquid fluid doesn't touch with the base material because this is a corrosive fluid because oil and gas have a lot of h2s right so to put that this cladding overlay have a technique to do it that's a typical for oil and gas uh, I think you guys know Sukumal, Sukumal and a lot of companies, they sell in kernel wire. So this is the corrosion, how it happens, right? If you put here, I think the, after some time, it will just turn off. So what we do, we just put it like a protective coating. Or we can make the whole thing as by, as, a, as of in kernel, but you know, right? Nickel producing countries, Canada mainly. And they control the price because of the nickel price, the internal become very, very expensive. So we do what we do with low alloy steel and we put a protective coating only on the surface where the fluid will be touching. Yeah. So cladding process, what we do, we do by oiling process. We do layer by layer. And once we do layer by layer, uh, make sh and what we have to do, we have different processes. We call PGMAW, PGTAW manual process, submerged oiling, some of you may know, some of you know, these are the different oiling process we use to do the cladding. So these are the typical cladding station, right? It will have a big uh, part rotating and these are, as I said, 40 on 30 or this is, these are low alloy steel. So when you do the oiling, suddenly you do heat it up, right? In like 1000 over temperature, it may have cracks. So we have to preheat, there's a lot of technique involved to it. So so see the part going doing cladding by MIG process. So this is like a torch and wire will be coming and those areas will be filled up by the cladding material, right? It's a very typical process, very specialized because we don't want the iron to come to the surface, right? Because the iron, if it comes, it will start corrosion again. So the purpose of cladding is to reduce the iron dilution on the top surface. So what we do, we put a layer of five mm and then we take it out, machine it out, because we have to machine out, because we need a very, very metal to metal seal. So we'll take out 2 mm, so we have a 3 mm minimum layer, and the iron dilution should be as minimum as possible, right? I'll go there. So these are the typical cladding station. We have, we can have one torch, you can have two torch, different process, automation, semi-automation, manual, all kinds of stuff we have. But the, the ideal process should be Highly quality deposit, right? Single pass, good finish, minimum heat input because minimum heat input to reduce dilution and minimum monitoring to reduce a lot of defects because cladding the, is, is a special technique. If you do bad way, it will have a lot of porosity, you can have a lot of um, cracks that can create a lot of problem in manufacturing, right? So the purpose of the cladding, as I said, the dilution should be 5%, right? The strong is the maximum 5 percent iron dilution on the top surface of the cladding. So 5% means 5% iron dilution, 10% means 10% iron on the top of the surface. 10% is not good. Uh, most of our customer all want 5% dilution because then maximum number of life. After we do cladding, we have to test again, right? There is a there, there is a different requirement for different procedure. ASME requirement we have, then we have API requirement. As I said, corrosion, there is corrosion National Association of Corrosion Engineers. They have their requirement, hardness requirement, and then we have customer requirement. Sometimes if you have, so typically you have to check the clad thickness. As I said, thickness plays a part. Then you have to do liquid penetrant test to, to check the surface defect. Do you have any surface defect? Then you have to do ultrasonic test, that internal defect or bond integrity, the cladding and the base material are properly integrated or not. 
then you have to do hardness check to tech. The hardness is not beyond 35 HRC. Then we see the customer requirement if any. And after all that, we have to do the full body MPI, which is called magnetic particle inspection, because this raw forging going through this cladding and heat treatment again, post oil heat treatment and come out, it should not have any crack or anything. So to ensure that, we'll do the MPI. Yeah. So we do the clad thickness check. We have a clad thickness gauge. Uh, we check like a 0.125 minimum inches. Uh, which is 3.2 millimeter. Now we check if it's meeting or not. After that, we do LPI, liquid penetrant test, see if there's any surface defect or not. If there's a surface de defect, we will come out red dot. If we do red, then we do MPI of the body to make sure there is no crack, right? If there's a crack, you can see the crack there sometimes, right, to picture. And you have to do ultrasonic to make sure the, the cladding layers and the base material are, are mixed together and bonded properly, yeah? So this is the cladding. So cladding finish. After you do cladding, it will go to machining. Machining should be very, very precision. We need to have a almost automatic machine, basically lathe or vertical turning or HBM. But these are very critical because the tolerance of these equipments are 0 0.001 inch. One thou, we call it, you know, industry standard. And I work for American company guys, so I don't know what you call it millimeter, but we call it one thou, which is 0 0.0001 inch. So that not only machine, then before that, you need to have automatic tooling program, automatic fix setting program, because once it goes inside the machine, operator has nothing to do. The machine will cut everything automatically. That's the, that's the sophistication of the machines are. Otherwise, you cannot use manual because of the tolerance issues, right? So we have the simulation software so that we know this part is going there. Exactly the same part, we'll do programming and tooling. It goes there and we'll, we'll machine accordingly as per the drawing we have. So after finished machining, then we go testing, as I said, ND testing, everything finished. Now we go to assembly and test. What we do, we assemble together and test based on the requirement we have two type of test. One is hydro test or is gas test. Hydro test we do when the when we have only producing oil, right? And it's, it's low, low depth. If we are going to produce gas, then we have to test the equipment to a gas test. We pump nitrogen inside and then we throw into the swimming pool. We have big, big swimming pool inside of factory. And we see that any gas bubble coming up or not. If there's a single bubble coming up from anywhere, that means the gas test has failed. That means we have to strip it down and then go and see what went wrong there. So, so this is a subsidy tree. Same thing we have to do because sub surface are these are surface trees because a very simple piece by piece we do because in the surface we can assemble piece by piece. But when you go subsea, we don't have the choice. We have to drop it inside the sea on the sea bed, right? This will be sitting in the sea bed. So this is pretty complicated. So we have to assemble everything in the soft floor and we have to test together and we have to throw in the big deep swimming pool too, the whole assembly and we do the hydro test and gas test to make sure there is no leakage there. So that uh, basically it, um, I think, uh, so that's what we do. Once we do the surface, uh, we, we, we pass the assembly and gas test. Once we pass it, then we just pack it and send it to the service site. And for for the surface portion, I'll go back again. What they will do in the surface rig, what they will do, they will they will do step by step, right? They will put this this picture uh, they will do like a bottom section and then you can do the top section right and then go to the Christmas tree you can you can install inside here uh, so not much issue but when you go subsea and in Singapore plant we do both surface and subsea uh, what they do there was subsea you, you, you drop in the seabed right and then it's go and sit in the seabed and start uh, and you start operating from the top Right, there's a lot of uh, controls on seat in the on the on the seat or drilling boards, and you control from the top, and oil will produce from there. 
So that's basically it. So I'm a metallurgist, as I said to you, right? We have a forging. We are deeply involved in a lot of forging companies are there. Then we have a lot of inspection, quality control. Then we have a cladding. is a huge, vast area for metallurgy guys to work on. I started my career as a welding engineer, as I said, and material engineer. And then slowly, slowly we run NGT, non-destructive testing. And then we run supply chain. But basically, that's, uh, that is it in a nutshell about oil and gas uh, manufacturing plant, how it looks like. So I think I am done. Um, I know it's very short. It's very difficult for me to explain the whole thing in 30 minutes.